variable valve lift. There are two methods of doing variable valve lift. Step changes that take place at a particular operating point and continuously variable valve lift. Just like we had with variable valve timing, we start off with step changes. The first one introduced was the Honda. You're looking here at the cam. This is a normal lobe we're looking at here on the left. As you notice, there are two normal lobes and then a high lift lobe in the center. What this system does is change the high lift lobe at a precise point in the operating cycle. This changes the timing and the lift of the valve. Let's go and talk about variable valve lift. We're going to use it to improve performance and improve fuel economy at the same time, all with the same driving patterns we normally have. In the early system, like the VTEC, this takes place at a specified speed. Uh, the PCM switches cam profiles on the Honda somewhere around 5,500, 6,000 RPM where engine power jumps by 20 horsepower. That all depends on the throttle position sensor and how fast you're accelerating. Two sets of cam lobes are used for valve timing and lift. During low speed operation, the valves run on a standard cam lobe, then above this 5,500, 6,000, the PCM switches to the high performance cam lobe. Now the way this is accomplished is going to be something fairly simple. They're going to use a very simple system. The basic mechanism is a simple hydraulically activated locking pin. The pin is hydraulically pushed horizontally to adjacent cam lobes. The spring mechanism is used to return the pin back to its normal position when the pressure is released. So it's very simple. This hydraulically operated pin closes in and locks cam lobes A, B, and C together. Now since the cam C is the highest cam lobe, the valves will now follow on the C cam lobe. During normal operation, they're working on A and B. The cam lobe on the left is a high performance profile. It will open the valve earlier, open it more, and close later compared to the one on the right. Now we're showing two cam lobes. Remember, there are actually three. There's a low profile on each side of the high profile. We've just redrawn this for simplicity. Here's our high performance cam lobe. It gives us high lift. Notice how much bigger the elliptical shape of this cam lobe is than the one on the right. This is the standard cam lobe on the right, which gives us good idle, normal operation, good economy. We don't put as much fuel into the cylinder. It's that simple. High lift cams put more fuel mixture into the cylinder. It requires more thing. The activation pin mechanism links the mid cam lobe to the high performance cam lobe like we're talking about. This effectively makes two cam lobes work and operate as one with the performance cam lobe opening earlier and closing later. So it's a very simple system. Pretty trouble free. The uh, composite cam lobe now clearly follows the overall cam profile like we're talking about on the one on the left. The actual cam is shown on the right where we see two low profiles and one high profile cam. The performance lobe is in the middle of these two normal cam lobes as we set. Now the VTEC is extremely reliable. Uh, Honda said they've had very, very few warranty claims, practically zero. Now low oil pressure can cause a failure of the switch at the high speed cam lobes and regrinding cams where you don't contain the exact same arc on the both cams has posed a problem. Both sets of lobes must be matched carefully to ensure that the lock and pin moves easily in position when they're at rest. Now this is only a problem on people who've tried to grind their cam lobes. The next stage after single step function is continuously variable valve lift. Not only are we going to get the extra valve lift, we're going to be using it to control engine speed. Intake valve control of engine speed has some unexpected advantages. Something you're not going to think about most of the time. We're going to eliminate the throttle plate. Now the most technicians say eliminate the throttle plate. That's bad. No, it's good because we'll eliminate pumping losses. Let's talk about what a pumping loss is. The throttle plate restricts intake air entering the intake manifold, creating a partial vacuum to limit engine speed. All good automotive technicians say, hey, I'd like to see 18, 20 inches of vacuum. Well, this 18 to 20 inches of vacuum must be overcome to pull air into the cylinder. So this is called a pumping loss. The work done to overcome this partial vacuum is called throttling losses or pumping losses. Controlling engine speed 
can be done with intake air control, like with a throttle plate, or with fuel control. Fuel control has limited control without causing performance problems. We all remember the old days of RPM limiters where we shut fuel off and the car suddenly shuddered and stumbled. And variable intake valve lift can eliminate the throttle plate in the intake by controlling the air entering the cylinder, not entering the throttle, not entering the manifold, but entering the cylinder. It's one step beyond what we've gone before. Because of this, and the throttle and the intake is open, valve control throttling has very little manifold vacuum because the intake is not restricted. BMW was the first to offer variable valve lift and engine control, throttle engine speed. They call their system the Valvetronic. It uses continuously variable valve lift along with a cam phaser for timing control. Valvetronic is the first to use valve control to control engine speed instead of throttle plates to restrict the intake air. It has a throttle plate, but it's closed for just starting the engine and then completely opens at normal speed. It's a backup safety device in case of a failure. The throttle plate is used strictly in a limp-in mode if something goes wrong with valve control. This is the Valvetronic. The valve timing uses a conventional phaser like we've had before. Remember, valve lift is a new function added on to all the advantages we got from controlling the valve with a phaser. The lift adjusting motor is used to control the intake valve lift. Now, here's our lift control motor on the left here. It's a DC motor that's going to use a gear to rotate a shaft that's going to vary the lift. We're going to vary the lift on the intake valves. Now, the valves on the right, the exhaust valves, are not affected by lift. We don't need to change those. They're affected by variable valve timing. So this is going to affect the lift, and this is going to be a simple rotator shaft. They all work on a similar principle. But the intake valves have the ability now to vary lift from zero, closed all the time, all the way up to 12 millimeter, and anything in between. Now we're going to talk about the different parts of this. Short duration, low valve lift is limiting air into the intake to control idle. That's the bottom line that says idle. Notice the duration is very narrow. The cam lobe, you see the cam profile, it's much shorter, much narrower than we go higher. So what we're getting with variable valve lift, we're increasing the lift and the duration. This gives us direct control over how much fuel is, mixture is entering cylinder. Valve lift, five millimeters, gives us the best fuel economy during cruise modes. Great fuel economy, smooth idle. Then when we go to maximum power, it's developed with valve lift over 10 millimeters. We can go anywhere from 10 to 12 millimeters, depending on what we're trying to do and how much power we want. Great full race cam is what we have at this level. A full race cam in the old days of a fixed cam was considered to be about 11 millimeter lift. We can exceed that value with going to 12 here. So what we have here is we can take the combination of variable valve lift and variable valve timing, and we can improve catalyst warm-up by optimizing valve timing for cold warm-up. The low valve lift is used for low to mid-range to reduce hydrocarbons emissions, and that's a great advantage. Now, the Valtronic system by BMW has some disadvantages. The valve train has a large mass, which limits the maximum RPMs, and the system's expensive. So there's some other variations. Nissan's variable valve event and lift, VVEL as they call it, has a similar valve lift system that controls cam timing with a phaser. The lift uses a concentric cam to vary the amount of lift. Concentric means the hole in the disc is not in the center of the disc. It is offset to one side, which gives us our variable valve lift. We have highlighted with a call out here the concentric cam. It's rotated by varying the pivot point of a link riding on the rocker cam to vary valve lift. You can see that the hole is not in the center of that mechanism. We're going to rotate that shaft with an electric motor. This uses a screw shaft with a ball nut. The BMW uses a gear mechanism to rotate it. All the time we're doing this, we also have to vary the position we have to know what position it's in. So one of the things you're going to see, this movement and the exact position of it, is measured by a position sensor 
right here on the side of the cam. This position sensor is going to tell the PCM when it sends a command for a specific valve lift that we have either achieved that valve lift or have not, and it makes the proper corrections and sets any diagnostic codes that might result if this does not position itself correctly. Now, Toyota has a Valvematic. It uses an electric motor like BMW and like Nissan and eliminate the throttle plates. A number of people are all doing this. You're hearing all the new vehicles talking about this as the newest appliance on vehicles. Here's what we're looking at. On the left, we have the maximum lift. Maximum lift is used for heavy loads. This is where we want maximum acceleration. We want a full race cam. We want performance, and we're not trying to improve efficiency. On the right, we've got light load. We have minimum valve lift, only necessary to control it where we need to. This limits the amount of mixture entering the cylinder, greatly improves our CO2 generation, greatly improves our fuel economy. So we get all the greenhouse gases to control better, mileage is better, performance is what the customer is looking for. Remember, the whole bottom line in this whole exercise is to give the customer the performance they're looking for while maintaining some drivability we've come to expect. So the variable valve lift can be a step function like the Honda VTEC, or it can be continuously variable like most other manufacturers. Most of the diagnostics rely on trouble codes, but engine performance changes are likely to develop if you have a problem. 